Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about regular expression, regex, meta characters. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com. I'm going to select the pop-out menu here and then the regex tutorials. I also have it underneath the regular, you know, um, if you're just going to go into the, the begin button there at the very bottom down there too as well. But I thought I'd kind of split these up because I think I'm probably going to have a couple dozen by the time I'm done, maybe. We'll find out. So let's see. I'm going to click uh, regex meta characters. So meta characters are ordinary characters that cause the compiled regex expression to be interpreted in a special way. Now the following list of characters are all meta characters with a brief description of what they commonly do. Okay, so the period, I'm gonna talk about him a lot today. So it's a wild card for any character, letter, number, symbol, space, anything basically, etc. Square brackets are used in character classes and I went over that in my character classes there. Now a lot of this I'm not going to go over here because it's beyond where we're at in this tutorial series there. But I'm going to talk a lot about the backslash character, and the backslash character is used to precede a meta character or a predefined character class. Now it is also used to indicate a Java escape sequence character. Okay, um, we've also gone over the dash for ranges too as well when we uh, talked about the character when I talked about the character classes there too. So. Um, I'll just leave this, this list here alone on that. Now the rest of it is, is stuff that I'm going to go over in future tutorials. So how can we force one of these characters to become a regular character? Well, there are two ways to make that happen. We can put a backslash in front of the character, or we can put the meta character or meta characters inside of a slash Q and a slash E, right? An example of a regular period would be slash Q and then period and then slash E. So that encloses the meta character in there and turns it into just a regular old character for a regular expression. Now the two rules above apply to regex expressions for any computer language. Since we are obviously using Java, we must factor in escape sequences. Now if you're not familiar with escape sequences, then I highly recommend you watch my escape sequences tutorial. Now in Java, the backslash character inside of a string literal indicates an escape sequence. Now the escape sequence to produce the backslash character is a double backslash. With that being said, the above regex rules translated exclusively for Java are put a backslash escape sequence, right, in front of the character, and number two, put the meta character or meta characters inside of a backslash escape sequence, right, Q and a backslash escape sequence E. Example of a regular period would be, of course, the backslash escape sequence Q, and then period, and then the backslash escape sequence E, okay? So in the list above, I, I describe a brief overview of some of the most commonly used actions. Regex, op, op, well, regex operations are quite extensive, and certain characters above can perform even more specialized actions depending on the context in which they are used, okay? Um, dollar sign is a good example of that. Now the key to, un and uh, on the contrary though, some of the characters above are just plain old characters, right? Um, if you did like a string literal search for dollar sign and you had something like five lines for dollar with the dollar sign in front of the one there, right? It would go ahead and find that there, right? But it's used differently in as a boundary matcher for the end of a line and, and some other situations there. So, um, but we'll get into that in the future tutorials, just kind of letting you know it, it depends on, everything depends on the context and where you use this stuff there. So, the key to understanding the purpose of a regex search pattern is to break down what each individual meta character is doing. Now, it can be quite confusing at first, and the cryptic appearance of a complicated regex expression, I should just say regular expression, that's a oxymoron right there, regular, anyway. We'll make anyone want to run for the door. Now let's imagine that we have a program that is prompting the user to input their IP address so we can route data directly to their device. We will need a way to validate the string that they enter is in fact, you know, basically a valid IP address. So a valid IP address 
consists of a grouping of the numbers 0 through 255 exactly four times right, separated with the period. And I didn't explain that very well, so I'll give you some examples there, right? Which is basically 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 through 255.255.255.255. Now, example of a regex pattern to check for a valid IP address would be, of course, this big thing, right? As you can see, you guys are just ran for the door already just looking at that. So, Now, I promise you that if you stick with learning regex, regular expressions, step by step, you will become a regex guru and the above expression will look like child's play someday. Now, prior to this tutorial, I have four regex tutorials. If you've already watched my regex character class tutorials, then you should already be familiar with the following characters, right? Opening and closing bracket, square bracket, right? Um, get the caret, the dash, and the and, right? And just to briefly go over those again, right? Square brackets are used in character classes. Right, the character class is used for negation. We went over that. The dash is used for ranges, and the ampersand is used for intersections. Okay, so um, if you don't remember that, you might just want to brush up on my character classes, part one and two, there, real quick on that. So, all right, let's go ahead and just come down here and get cracking and give you some examples and what to look for, what to, uh, pitfalls, and uh, how to use them properly. I like the source code, control C to copy, or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop down here. If you don't have it, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go and open it up. If you're new to my tutorials, type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that done properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash CD short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java with the MD command. And I already have that folder, but if you don't have it, it will go ahead and create it for you. Let's change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here and I'm just going to call this one regex um, meta characters. Change directories to the regex meta characters folder. I'm on Notepad. Uh, regex meta characters. Java. That'll be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. All right. Let's go ahead and do Control V to paste that stuff in, or right click and select paste. Okay. Let's come up here. Save this first off. All right. So single class regex meta characters. Two methods, of course, our main method entry point here, and then I've got the display find. And if you've been watching my regex tutorials, this is the same one I use every time, but just to go over it real quick there, I'm using the pattern class, invoking the compile method for the past regex string regular expression string that I pass in. Okay, that'll build a pattern object, and then that pattern object will invoke the matcher class with the, um, the search me string, right? And then we'll have our matcher object. Now once we've got our matcher object going, then we can invoke the find method there. And find will return true while it keeps finding the regex pattern in the search string. Okay? And then we'll invoke, of course, the group. Um, and then the index, and then show you the regular expression. So all pretty straightforward on that. If it didn't find it, it'll just simply display no matches for that regex and you know in string searching. Fairly simple on that. Alright, um, let's come up here to the well, you know what, let's just run this and I'll talk about each one of these as we go over with the uh, the results from that. So, let's pop over to our command prompt. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to clear the screen. Java C, and then hit tab to pull that up, right? And let's go ahead and compile that. Java, and then tab again. We want to strip off that class because we're invoking the reg, reg X meta characters class, of course. All right, so let's scroll back up here to the top and take a look at this first grouping here, right? So what we have here is this first statement right here where we're just looking for the dot, right? And it's saying the dot is for any character, right? So if we were searching for the dot in this particular IP address here, right? Well, it's going to come back and it's going to, as you can see, 107, it, find, it found all of them, right? And that's because the dot used alone is a meta character. It's not the actual dot, like a period, right? It is, but you know, it's a special meta character and that tells it to, the dot is the wild, ultimate wild card and that's any character. So that will find 
uh, basically everything there, right? A match on everything. Now what we really intended to do is we really wanted to find how many dots were really in this particular um, search string here. So um, according to the rules there, we have to put it in front, uh, we have to precede it with a backslash character here, right? So backslash dot, and that tells us we're just looking for a regular old dot character. Now because of Java, we have to use the escape sequence, right? Because we're enclosing this in this string literal right here. So we do the escape sequence and then backslash, and that will produce essentially a backslash dot, right? And so here's what we get for that, that, that regex expression right there. And you can see when it translated the string literal, we get the backslash and we get the dot. So it found three dots there, one at index three, one at index five, and one at index eight. So three, five, and eight, right? Let's see, that's actually um, got three characters, then it found it, right? But uh, it's interesting on that little thing. It varies a little bit from like, for example, like substring, right? That would find it at, uh, well, anyway, 0, 1, 2, and 3 is what we're looking at. It So it actually is the same. Never mind that. I'm just going off on tangents this morning. All right, so anyway, so you can see that's how we do it there for the first rule. Now, the second one is we can enclose it in a slash Q and a slash E. And, of course, we've got our escape sequence there for that, right? And that's how we can find it there. So looking at the results for that, slash Q dot slash E, found those dots at those same indexes there, three of them there, okay? All right, so let's go down to the next one here. What if we were to just do, like for example, um, dot, dot, dot. Now here's three meta characters in a row, and if we search for, let's say for example, this string literal, blah, blah, and then you know the ellipsises will uh, basically represent, you know, like even more blah, blahs in there, right? But if we wanted to search for ellipsises in this particular um, search string, string literal there, if we did it like this, basically we're telling it that, okay, these are meta characters because they're not preceded by backslashes. They're not enclosed in QEs here. So here's what we get, right? Unexpected result. So it actually, basically, when we tell it we're searching for dot, 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 right? We're telling it, basically, we're searching for groups of three characters. So it finds BLA, then H, A space, right? So it finds these then those, right, and so on and so forth there. So it finds all groupings of three characters, right? So not, not particularly useful in that particular case there. Okay, so um, let's scroll up here a little bit more. So what we were originally trying to do is see if, you know, we can find ellipsises in, in this particular search string there. So we can do it by, you know, doing each one, right? Um, basically, you know, doing the backslash dot there, right? And then with the escape sequence, three times over, right? And that will tell it we're looking for three dots. We can also do it, of course, using the escape sequence uppercase Q and then dot, 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 and the escape sequence uppercase E to indicate everything in between these guys is what we're searching for, okay? So we come back over here, get matcher found dot 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 at index 10 for this regular expression here, right? And string blah, blah, blah. Matcher found dot 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 at index 10 for this reg x expression, well, reg x here, and the string literal there, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at there. All right, now let's, let's take it up a whole new level there of confusion, or maybe you'll just get it. Um, we'll see here. But what I'm gonna display to the console here is basically escape sequence, for the backslash, an escape sequence for the backslash, and then Java, and then same old, same old, right? So when you come out here and you look at this right over here, right, that's what that translates into by putting in four backslashes, and then four more backslashes. We essentially get two backslashes. Okay, so our, um, now, our regular expression translates into that, right? Because this is a string literal here, so but we want our regular expression to search for backslashes in C colon backslash Java backslash, right? And you can see in the string literal over here, the escape sequences translate into backslashes, and we get this string literal there, okay? So if we want to search for backslash Java backslash, we have to do four backslashes, which is two escape sequences, so we can come up with basically, um, you know, searching for the actual backslash 
in a backslash string there. Okay, so hopefully that, that makes sense. But matcher found backslash Java backslash at index two for regular expression slash slash Java slash slash in string C colon backslash Java backslash. Okay. So if you get this, then you are good, you're golden. I mean, you know, meta characters, I'm sure it's just gonna be just fine, no problemo. So that's that's as complicated as all these backslash escape sequences stuff gets there, okay? So um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the stuff I went over in the, the character classes there, right? So um, like for example, when we do the square bracket for one, square bracket, we're searching for four and one, but not 41, right? Because these are single characters. This isn't a string 41. So we're searching for either four or either one and both of them basically there. So in this particular search string, string literal here, new int 14, right? We're creating an array, basically um, 14 primitive ints there in that array. Fairly, fairly simple. Right. Um, if we're searching for either four or one, what do we get here? So we're searching for regex uh, character class 41, right? Four or one, I should say. And we found uh, one at index number eight and we found four at index number nine, right? Okay, so that's basically the character class we're kind of going over that again. But what if we wanted to actually search for say, um, literally, I shouldn't say literally, but exactly, you know, the character's uh, bracket, 41 bracket, right? Well, we could enclose them in um, our Q and our E, right? Escape sequence Q and escape sequence E. And if we search for that there, right, we're gonna get no matches found, right, for 14 there. Now, what if we search for um, just uh, int array 41, right? Then all of a sudden we find it at index number seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is where we find that there, right? So that's how we can do that. Uh, the other option is, of course, we could do the uh, backslash, right? And then escape sequence there, and then the bracket, and then 41, right? And then the backslash, escape sequence, and then 41, right? So we're turning these meta characters into ordinary characters by doing it either this way or this way, right? And we get the same search result for that. Okay, so um, I think that's about all I wanna cover there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this off screen, this off screen and leave you guys with some final thoughts there. So when creating regular expressions, it is important to understand how meta characters affect the outcome of a search. Now having a solid understanding of Java escape sequences will help prevent any unexpected strange behavior from occurring in your search as well. Stay tuned for my next tutorial on predefined character classes, where I will be discussing the special backslash character once again. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.